We zijn in Brussel bij François Angler. François Angler die samen met Robert Braut enkele weken voor Higgs al het deeltje omschreef dat we nu kennen als het Higgs deeltje, maar dat dus eigenlijk gezien moet worden als het Braut Angler Higgs deeltje. En in 2012, dus 50 jaar nadat hij het bedacht had, werd het deeltje daadwerkelijk ontdekt en werd zijn ideeën bevestigd. In 2012, everybody talks about the Higgs boson of the world. But it shouldn't be called the Higgs boson, right? How should well, we call it? Well, uh, we should, I think, call it uh, the boson, the Higgs boson, or initials, whatever you like. Uh, but, uh, okay, th there was an initial mistake, actually. Um, actually, it's uh, uh, Weinberg explained it. In, uh, Stephen Weinberg? Uh, yes, yes, well, he explained yes. that he... Uh, called, he made, he listed the reference first by Higgs, he said, and, uh, and then he put our reference after, right? Uh, there was a mistake in the order uh, of so presentation, he, and then he said uh, that, the, the, therefore, that because of this, the name of Higgs came first, but it, It's not correct, yeah. but he said it's not important. So to you, some extent, I may agree, but to some extent. So you wrote an article with Robert Proud, uh, viewed it, and it was only three pages long, and you didn't name the particle, right? No. Why not? Oh, because the essential problem here, the particle is maybe important for the experimentalists because they have to show it to prove, but the, 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 the particle is contained in our first equation in the paper, but it's not the essential of the mechanism. The particle by itself doesn't do very much. So it's not, uh, it, it's interesting to, to test the theory. Yeah. It's not that interesting as far as part of the theory. So for Actually, you, the, the theory could work without yeah. that particle. The theory could work without the particle. With, uh, it could. Yes, to some it, it depends the order of the mass, but it yeah. could work. Why do we have to give particles mass? Why is that so necessary? That I will explain to you, uh, at least in our way to, I mean, our is brought and me, uh, how we envisage the problem. There is one theory, the theory to be predictive has to be valid quantum mechanically. There was only one real theory that was worked that worked quantum mechanics is electromagnetism. So we wanted to follow electromagnetism as close as we can because we wanted the theory to be valid quantum mechanically. And uh, therefore the difficulty was that we put ourselves in a difficult position because Electromagnetism is done by photons which have no mass, and the generalization are particles which have no mass. So we put ourselves in a theory which has no mass in it because we expected that this would be valid quantum mechanically, and uh, then we had the problem to find a, a mechanism for giving them mass. We, we invented that mechanism to give a mass to yeah. particles which supposedly cannot have mass. Okay, so that's... That, is, that should be very clearly said. Physics has a crisis, is in a crisis now. So, it's a crisis, right? Then uh, there, there have been a lot of beautiful, recently, experimental discovery, but yeah. particularly in the domain of, uh, of uh, cosmology and, uh, and uh, the gravitational waves and all of that, but theoretically, as far as I'm concerned, there are, con there are speculation, but since 50 years, there is not have been a, uh, a breakthrough in our understanding There's no of nature. There's no theoretical breakthrough. No, there's no theoretical breakthrough in our understanding of nature. Some people think that string theory is that, but it yeah. needs another breakthrough to be valid. And uh, and uh, so uh, there is no, uh, for the moment, one needs really something completely new. That I am convinced of that because 
fishing around and all the other thing, all the things that we have, is in my opinion not going to solve the great problems, which is the real solution to the quantization of gravity and possibly of quantum mechanics yes. itself. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences has decided to award the 2030 Nobel Prize in Physics to Professor François Anglais at Université Libre de Bruxelles, Belgique. Are you famous now here in Brussels? Well, it depends who, it depends who, it depends, it depends, right? Uh, yeah, of course, I am, in a sense. But th there is a sphere of the atomium named after you, right? Uh, the, 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 the who cares? That's a, uh, that's a, <laughs> you, you don't really care about No, that things, I no. don't care about <laughs> the sphere of the atomium having my name, and uh, I accept that what they did. That's a commercial issue, I'm not in actually, so I don't care. I don't, I don't think you can build a, uh, a, uh, a happy and consistent and uh, successful uh, set of results in your life if you are just motivated by getting the dollar. No. That's nonsense. Okay. And uh, you're motivated by doing physics and uh, trying to understand in a more general time, try to understand nature. That's what you are. That's what it's in, what it's all that's about. That's the motivation yeah. that, that was motivated me. Thank you very much, Michel Lair.